So this is just a quick video for my apple breeding series um, where we're following my amateur apple breeding efforts from pollination to all the way through fruiting. And so we made some pollinations earlier in the spring where that's what these orange tags are. And now the birds are starting to get out the apples and I want to protect the apples and label all of them. So everything that I intentionally made, you know, a, a pollination on, I'm going to write on the apple the exact cross with a sharpie. So in case it falls off, I'll know exactly what it is. And then the other thing I'm going to do is protect the fruit. And I have a few of these left. They're called footies or foot socks. And they're just like a little piece of nylon that is supposed to protect your foot from foot disease if you go like trying on shoes at the store. It seems fairly ineffective to me, but whatever. I'm not crazy about these. The birds will still try to peck through them. They're kind of wasteful. You can use them maybe two years in a row and uh, paper bags have their own disadvantages. You can try to like staple them on or tape them on, but they're never that great either. Now the convention is that you always write the seed parent first. So that's the, you know, this apple is the seed parent. So You can see here, this one's already been pecked by birds. This is sweet 16. Um, sorry, I'm eating. I, I found a almost ripe carry pippin, a couple of them. They're actually, they're almost, almost totally ripe, but only because they've been pecked by birds. This is, a, this is a pretty good early apple. I'll probably talk about it later. Do a video review sometime. Anyway. Okay, I'll stop eating. So this is Sweet 16, and um, I use this a lot this year. I've used it in the past too, just because it has a lot of really intense flavors, which I wanna infuse into the apples I'm breeding. But one thing about Sweet 16 is the birds love it. It is extremely aromatic. I've been on the ladder in the tree and like smelled the apples, you know, <clears throat> a few feet away. So this one is crossed with uh, King David. So this is sweet 16 X K D. So the birds love these apples. Uh, there's already several on the ground. I can see numerous apples that have already been pecked. I will probably come out here and cover a bunch of these apples just so I get to eat some of them. I mean, this apple is so popular with birds that it's basically almost a deal killer. This one's crossed with Wixen. That should be interesting. And this one's crossed with Cherry Cox. So yes, that is the name of an apple, not a porn star. Uh, Cherry Cox, it's C-O-X by the way, is a cherry flavored apple and Sweet 16 also has cherry flavors in it. So I'm trying to gang them up and reinforce that, that trait. So you can see I put footies on these earlier because uh, the birds were just already on it, so. This apple is probably, <clears throat> it's close to ripe. This is um, William's Pride, a August apple. Well, in this case, it looks like it may be July. And uh, you know, this isn't gonna last much longer, so I'll have to pick it, but the, the seeds are probably mature already. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna pick it now. This is a little crab apple called Maypole. This is crossed with Wixen. That is pretty exciting. I don't need to label the seed parent on this because it's unique. Pretty cool. Check out the red seeds. Here's the seedlings uh, for you know last year's pollinations here. They got a late start, but now they have their feet under them and I'll probably throw some uh, manure tea on them in the morning. And uh, I think, you know, they still have about two and a half months of growth potential. If, you know, I keep forcing them and keep feeding them and watering them, they, they could grow through the end of September. So these could actually get pretty big, which is good. And uh, let's go say hi to my new pig. So I just picked up this pig today from my friend. It's a guinea hog, um, and 
apparently they don't root very much and they're good at grazing on, you know, green stuff and grass. Uh, she's raised them mostly on alfalfa and kitchen scraps with not really any grain, which I think is awesome. Uh, that should make the fat better, you know, um, in terms of the, the actual fat composition, the, which fatty acids are in there. And uh, it also means that, you know, this kind of pig would have potential to do a lot of grazing in the wintertime when we have green grass, which we don't have now. As you can see, it's, it's very dry, not good for grazing animals right now. But, you know, November through May, there's grazing available. Hey.